people. You cannot have a low-energy president. Now, there's a reason he's got the lid, and I'm trying to figure it out. And I have a feeling it's because of the corruption, because he can't have. Did you see where he walked out in prime time right after it happened, holding ice cream, right? And the press asked him, what flavor is it, sir? What flavor? Ah, uh, I think it's vanilla and chocolate. That was the question. They don't ask me questions like that. What flavor, sir? I don't think he likes me too much. We better win. No, he's not a nice guy. He's not. No, people that knew him in prime time, People that knew him in prime time, he was, he was never a nice guy. Phony guy. He was never a nice guy. I don't think he's a nice guy. But now he's probably more agitated than ever before. Biden's $4 trillion tax increase is a missile aimed at the heart of the middle class and middle class families. That's all it is. You're going to lose all your jobs. These companies are all going to go back where they came from. We brought in tremendous numbers of companies. I mean, look at the auto business. We hadn't had a factory in 40 years, and now they're opening up all over Michigan, all over the place. Ohio, North Carolina, South Carolina. We didn't have, I'd say to Prime Minister, I'd be a great, great gentleman who retired. He got, he had a problem, medical problem, but he retired. I'd say, uh, Shinzo, you got to open some factories in Michigan. You got to open up some factories in the U.S. I don't care where, you got to open up factories, Shinzo. You're selling too many cars made in Japan. You got to make them in the U.S. And it's say, uh, well, I don't do that. I mean, look, we don't have anything to do with that. This is done by the private sector. I said, Shinzo, you're a powerful man. You can do it. I really can't. I said, you have to do it. Next day, they announced five companies were opening up factories. So that was the end of that idea. And he's a great guy, Shinzo. And I hope he's going to be well. He's a great — he was a great leader of Japan. In my second term, I will pass another historic middle-class tax cut. It's already uh... — Now, Biden, you know, all my life I've been studying politics. I watched it. I was on the other side. I was a contributor to, like, everybody. They came to my office. I was a contributor to everybody. And they would come in. But all my life I watched, and I'd watch taxes. And I've never seen this before, where somebody goes, we will raise your taxes. Vote for me. No, it's never happened. I've always watched politicians, we will cut your taxes, we will cut your taxes, we will cut your taxes. Biden gets up, we will raise your taxes. And people say, oh, a lot of people don't get it. They'll go like, oh, did I hear that right? No, it's going to raise your taxes. So Biden wants to eliminate oil. Think of it in Texas. You saw him in the debate the other night. Now, he can't get away with that. I said, so tell me, because he almost made it. And then that last question got him. And Kristen, who is, you know, not particularly in my camp, I thought she did a good job, to be honest. I thought she did a good job. She looks at him, she goes, why would you do that? And then I said, yeah, why would you do that? And unfortunately for his party, he said he will transition out of oil. And I said, are you listening, Texas, right? Are you listening, Pennsylvania? And are all the people in the country, because we have an energy-independent country right now. And once we get New Hampshire and New England, the pipeline cutting across New York, which we're very close to getting, you will have energy prices that will be, like, low, very low. Very low. And nobody else will be able to get that pipeline. That I can tell you. Nobody else. That means that no heat in New Hampshire, winters, $5 a gallon gasoline, much more than that, I think. Think of it. What are you now? $2? And you'll go under $2, right? $2, right? Armenia. You know Armenia? We're working on that. You know, we're working. We did it with Kosovo and Serbia. Do you believe? I got three nominations for the Nobel Peace Prize. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? The Middle East, we're doing peace. I did it the opposite way of what these fools did for years. We, we just signed the third Sudan yesterday. We signed. So we have Bahrain, UAE, United Arab Emirates, 
led by a great gentleman, a great leader, a great warrior, actually, Mohammed. And yesterday we got Sudan. I mean, no blood in the sand, no cost, no this, no that. The opposite way. And then we got one, Serbia. We had Serbia, because this relates to Armenia. We had Serbia, Kosovo. We're doing a trade deal. I said, wait a minute, these people, right? Serbia. These people have been killing themselves. They've been killing each other for years and years and decades. And we're dealing with both of them unrelated. I said, fellas, if you don't get your act together, we're not going to deal with you. What the hell do we have to deal for? We don't have to. You know, we're doing trade deals. I said, wait a minute, they've been fighting each other and killing each other for years. I told my people, tell them they got to work a deal. Otherwise, we're not going to do a deal with either of them. Of course, it's nothing. And you know what? They hugged and they kissed in the Oval Office and they were so happy. And this is after many years. Nobody thought they could come together. Nobody thought they'd come together. That deal was worse than Israel, if you think about it, and the Palestinians. Israel and the Palestinians, they say, can't. It'll come together. It'll come together. We stopped paying. We used to give the Palestinians $750 million a year. And I said, look, we're not going to pay you. If you're not going to make a deal, why would we pay? And other people said that was a terrible thing. It wasn't a terrible thing, because they'd say death to America, death to Israel, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And now they want to talk. They all want to talk. So we have three countries. We have many countries lined up. You'll end up with peace in the Middle East with nothing, but for nothing. And a neighbor of yours, John Kerry, said two years ago, it would be impossible to do the deal that way. No, no, that's the only way you can do the deal. And it'll all come, it's all coming together beautifully. We're going to have peace in the Middle East. What we've done is pretty amazing, but with Serbia, Kosovo. So there, so we signed a deal. So they gave me a Nobel Prize for that. They gave me a Nobel Prize for something else. They should give me a Nobel Prize for what I did in Syria. When I say Nobel Prize, nomination. I don't know. You know, I don't I don't know. But with Serbia, so now we have Armenia. Look at the Armenia. They are incredible people. They're fighting like hell, right? They're fighting like hell. And you know what? We're going to get something done because, thank you, and I love you too. You know, the Armenians have had a tough, they've had a tough go. But I saw, in fact, I was in yesterday, Ohio, actually. I was in Ohio during, because I went to various stops, but in Ohio, we had a tremendous group of Armenians with the flag and the whole thing, the spirit. And the problems that they have and the death and the fighting and everything else, we'll get that straightened out. That's going to be, I call that an easy one, okay? We'll get that. Go back and tell your people. Go back and tell your people, all right? We'll get that straightened out. Armenia, why not? It's easy. If you know what you're doing, if you know what you're doing, it's like that. If you know what you're doing, it's easy. But we will. But think of that with Kosovo, Serbia. I said, well, we're doing these two. We're not doing either deal unless they put it together. And they actually, they both came back, the prime ministers. They came back. They were in the Oval Office two weeks ago, hugging and kissing. It was an incredible thing, very historic. And what are we doing? We're saving a lot of lives. We're saving a lot of good people from being killed. See, normally I wouldn't tell you all this stuff, but we're in the afternoon. Where are we going from here? There's no more NFL that you watch. Where the hell are we going? From? Biden is also bad. You think Sleepy Joe would be doing these things? I don't think so. I don't think. He'll go back to bed. Hillary used to spend a lot of time in bed, too. But she had more energy than him. She did. She had more. They said, what's the difference between crooked Hillary Clinton and Biden. I said, well, they're obviously they're both crooked, but let's get out of that. The big difference is she had more energy, but not much. And she's a more intelligent person. I will say this, she's a much more intelligent person. Until she used the word deplorables, I thought she was very smart. Biden has also vowed to impose the highest business tax rate in the developed world on companies that created jobs in our country. They came over here, they created jobs. They'll be gone in two minutes. Triggering it would trigger a mass exodus of companies and jobs out of America and back into the places they came for or other places. That's what happens. They would leave. 
And we don't want people to leave. We want them to stay, and we want those jobs, and we want that income. You've had them leave already under NAFTA. Biden also pledged to eliminate our tariffs on China. We're taking in tens of billions of dollars. We taxed them where they dumped the steel. We taxed them where they targeted our farmers. I gave our farmers — this doesn't pertain too much to you, but a little bit — I gave our farmers $28 billion from China because they were targeted. And it kept our farmers solvent and actually strong. In other words, he wants to raise taxes on American factories and give preferential treatment to Chinese factories. There's nobody that wants to see us raise taxes on companies more than China and other countries, because they're going to pick up the business. So remember this. If Biden wins, China wins. If we win, New Hampshire wins and America wins. Very simple. Very simple. Besides that, how can he make a deal with China when he's taking a lot of money out of China, right, for himself and his family? His son walked away with a billion and a half dollars. He gets fees on a billion and a half. So how can a guy like that — seriously, did you see the letter — oh, that, that laptop he's got? You know the laptop. You know what it's called? I said it last night in Wisconsin. It's called the laptop from hell, right? That laptop. That laptop is not good. But did you see that he wants $10 million a year from China for introductory reasons? In other words, he's going to introduce them to people. You know who the people are going to be? His father. He's going to introduce them to his father. So this guy was — we won't say why and how — sadly, no longer in the Navy, right? Empty years, nothing. And then his father becomes vice president. And now he's making tens of millions of dollars. It's wrong. It's wrong. And Joe's making it, too, by the way. Joe's making it, too. Ten percent. We got to give ten percent to the big guy. Oh, what does that mean? Tell us. What does ten percent to the big guy mean? Explain that. That's why Joe has got the — that's why Joe has the lid on. The Biden tax hikes will also reimpose Obamacare's individual mandate penalty, which I ended. I ended the individual mandate, most unpopular part, which really makes it not even Obamacare anymore. We took it the most — the most egregious thing in Obamacare was the individual mandate. You had to pay a fortune for the privileges of not paying a fortune to have terrible health insurance, all right? And in the meantime, we've brought the rates down. We've done it well. We've done a great job with it. But much better would be if we come up with brand new health care. We'll see what happens in the Supreme Court. Always protecting people with pre-existing conditions, always. Eighty percent of this tax would fall on Americans making less than 50000 a year. You know, he keeps talking about the 400. That's not, it doesn't work that way, and he knows that. Well, he doesn't know it, but the people surrounding him. There's virtually no aspect of American life that Joe Biden does not want to tax and regulate into oblivion. And worse will be the regulations, because the taxes will go through the roof. But I think that the biggest reason we were successful is that I took off more regulations than any president, whether it's four years, eight years, or, in one case, more. He will also massively cut your so — he's always wanted to do this — massively cut your Social Security and your Medicare. And it's all part of the war on the middle class. I don't think he — I don't know. I don't know what he's thinking. I've never seen a politician that wants to hurt Social Security that survives. And then he denied it. But you'll see in a second, because you don't have to take my word for it. Just listen to Biden explain his crazy views and crazy plans just a little while ago. So roll out the video. I do this because I love this state. I spent a fortune for that, so I hope it works. I hope it works. The way we pay for it is by rolling back on productive tax cuts. That's why I'm going to eliminate the Trump tax cuts. Guess what? If you elect me, I'm not going to have your taxes. are going to be raised, not cut. I would repeal the $2 trillion tax cut. First thing I would do as president was eliminate the president's tax cuts. Let's reverse the Trump tax cuts. The vice president has laid out a plan to increase taxes. When would you make these changes, is my point, because the economy is in a bad state right now. You wouldn't — I mean, would you wait for Unemployment oh, to go under 2%. No, 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 no. I'd, I'd make the changes on the corporate taxes on day one. 
Bingo. Let me ask you a question, John. Yeah. You're right here with me. Yeah. Have you been on the floor of the Senate? You were in the Senate for a few years. Yeah. Time and time again, talking about the necessity, with pride, about cutting Social Security, cutting Medicare, cutting veterans' programs. No. You never said that? No. When I argued that we should freeze federal spending, I meant Social Security as well. I meant Medicare and Medicaid. I meant veterans' benefits. I meant every single solitary thing in the government. Look, here's the deal. You're an honest guy. Why don't you just tell the truth here? We all make I, mistakes. I, I am telling the truth. And I not only tried it once, I tried it twice, I tried it a third time, and I tried it a fourth time. Joe, let me repeat it again. I want you just to be straight with the American people. I am saying that you have been on the floor of the Senate time and time again talking about the need to cut Social Security Medicare and veterans programs. Is that true or is that no, not true? No, it's not true. What that is, is not true? That is not true. I meant veterans, but I meant every single solitary thing in the government. Everything was on the table. I did not support any of those cuts in Social Security or in veterans. Whoa, benefits. whoa, whoa. You, you, everything was on the table. All right, you're right. You just said it, including, in your judgment, cuts to Social Security and veterans. In order to get the kinds of changes we need on other okay. things related. Joe, but, you just, but we did not cut it. I, I know, because people like me helped stop that. All that I would say to the American people, go to YouTube. It's all over the place. Joe said it many, many times. And I'm surprised, you know, you can defend that or change your mind on it, but you can't deny the reality. Secondly, we're in a situation where we have put together, and you guys did, did it for our administration, the President Obama's administration before this. We have put together, I think, the most extensive and inclusive voter fraud organization in the history of American politics. Proudly for your dad, first African American state senator in the state of in the state of Delaware. Everything about And by the way, you know I sit on the stand and it get hot, I got a lot of I got hairy legs that turn that 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 that, that turn uh, uh, um, blonde in the sun. And the kids used to come up and reach in the pool and rub my leg down so it was straight and then watch the hair come back up again. They'd look at it. So I learned about roaches. I learned about kids jumping on my lap. And I've loved kids jumping on my lap. So he did try and cut your Social Security, just like he's, he said for a year, there will be no fracking. And then he got through that, and he goes to Pennsylvania, and he says, you can frack. And then he denied it, and the media never did anything about it. They don't ask him the question. But the other day, fortunately, in the debate, in one of the better parts of the debate, he said he's getting rid of it. So I think Pennsylvania is going to — he will not let you frack. It's not him. His party will never let you frack, okay? It's a million jobs in Pennsylvania, and for you, it's billions of dollars in energy costs. I will cut your taxes, not raise them, and I will always protect Medicare and Social Security, just like I've been doing. This election is a choice between a Trump recovery, and I call it a Trump super recovery, because that's what's happening. You see the name? at a Biden depression. If he gets in, you're going to have a depression, the likes of which you've never seen before, with the possible exception of 1929. He's going to raise your taxes through the sky. He's going to put all those regulations. It would take 18 years to get a highway approved. We have it down to two. We're trying to get it down to one. And it may not get approved for environmental or for safety reasons, but you're going to know very quickly we have regulation cuts. Nobody's ever seen anything like it. He wants to put all that garbage back in, all that wasted, wasted stuff. And we have more cuts to come. And we need regulation. We're going to have regulation, but it's going to be reasonable. It's not going to be where it's impossible to build a simple road from point A to point B. So you have a choice, New Hampshire, between a Trump boom or a Biden lockdown. He wants to lock it down. 
He said, no, I'd lock it down. We're not locking down. We understand the disease. We're going to take such, and we've been taking care of our elderly, especially with heart or diabetes problems. And we're going to take care of it, and we're going to be careful, and we're going to be vigilant. But we're not locking down. He would lock it down in a heartbeat. He would. The Biden lockdown would permanently destroy the lives and dreams of tens of millions of our citizens, wipe out what will be and what's turning out to be the greatest economic comeback of all time. You see what's happening. Desperately hurt our small businesses, inflict lasting harm on our children, and massively reduce life expectancy for the American people. Life expectancy. So, for the American people, you see what happens. And I came up with a statement. I don't know. I think it was me. They'll try and find somebody else said it 25 years ago. The cure cannot be worse than the problem itself. When you look at what's happening with these lockdowns, right? I mean, look at Michigan, how she's so vicious. She's vicious to everybody but her husband. He can do whatever he wants. He can go sailing. He can do whatever he wants. No, but look, and we won that case in the Supreme Court. Michigan has to open. It was unconstitutional. She was running like jail cells over there. And Pennsylvania and, right, and so many other places. But fortunately, you people are in good shape. You're in good shape. You have no complaints. Lockdowns will also lead to a surge in